Hey Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to review just the uh, blood red on the uh, stock markets. Of course, this does follow the CPI data, and there's no way to get around this. I have to say, the worst case situation has unfolded. So we presented about uh, three scenarios that could happen, and I just want to say... Uh, just directly in unmixed terms that the worst case situation has happened, okay? So uh, what does that mean exactly? It doesn't mean that the uh, CPI data was particularly shocking or anything like that. It just means that the market has decided uh, in its collective wisdom, in its collective fear, in its collective ignorance, that it's necessary to go deeper red, and it probably will get even deeper red, okay, by the time all is said and done. Let's go uh, through some of this. Uh, what Right now, what you see on the uh, good old crypto bubbles here is uh, basically just a, uh, a mixed bag of responses to what happened in the markets today, and I think crypto because it's one of those riskier assets that took a hit the hardest in the beginning of all of this downturn uh, last year that, uh, you know, many of these coins have reached pretty much their bottom. Uh, you know, there there is a lot of room for uh, altcoins to fall, uh, maybe uh, 20 to, uh, you know, even 60% in some cases that that is actually possible for the majority of these altcoins to continue to fall, but many of them are starting to reach their 886 on their Fibonacci levels. Many of them are starting to put in uh, bottoming patterns, and so you are seeing a little bit of resistance in the crypto market to all of this chaos compared to the stock market, which of course, as I've mentioned, time and time again on this channel for the last six months has irrational has irrational uh, P over E ratios. And what I told you is that by uh, the end of the third quarter in 2022 and no later than quarter one, 2023, I told you month after month after month that there would come a war between the people who were focused on inflation and the people who were focused on recession, but more importantly, as part of recession, the people who were focused on price over earnings ratios as assigned to a stocks and the indices in the stock markets, which means that there is a significant portion of people who now believe, and this CPI data was just sort of the last straw for them, who believe that, uh, you know, the market is overpriced significantly, that there will be a recession, and that because of that, you know, uh, we are seeing just a spike in the dollar in a flee to safety. And we are seeing just a uh, drop, right? Just a huge drop in the stock market in response. Now, why, why is this happening, right? When the CPI data was pretty nominal. I mean, I told you guys that, uh, you know, anything, any, right? Any inflation whatsoever would be considered bad. Okay, by the market. We expected pullbacks. We expected to see red across the board in the stock market today because, as I mentioned in my last video before markets opened today, I mentioned that the market has an expectation of at least zero inflation, which is very idealistic. Okay, really no inflation whatsoever in the current markets. That's what they believed, okay? So, again, markets don't have to be rational. Markets can be irrational and emotional. And 
as I mentioned in the last video, they expected not only 0% inflation, which is kind of insane, they expected negative 0.1% inflation. And to be honest, I think a fair amount of the market actually wanted to see us to get to uh you know, negative 0.2%, right? They wanted to see that inflation was being fought. But what happened? We showed that we actually increased inflation. And not only that, that our year over year was not just one point, right? I said we had some wiggle room in these year over year numbers. We had some wiggle room. It could be it could be higher than this number by 0.1, right? Maybe you could get away with 0.2. It's a fairly large amount with the with the numbers we're talking about, trillions of dollars, right? But 8.3, you round that up, right? You round that up, and that's basically 8.5, okay? Right? You're doing you you're rounding to these like a half. You know, these half places. People look at 8.3 and they just see 8.5, okay? They're just saying, you know, they look at this number and they say, well, this, this really hasn't improved, okay? Like 0.2% improvement in one year, that that's not good, right? That doesn't bode well, right? Maybe we could have just type of, some type of rounding error, Error of a uh, 8.1, that would be okay, but 8.3 was it was just a bridge too far, right? And then you look at the core CPI data, and you know markets were fine with this. You saw we were pumping, right? 5.9 to 6, right? It increased a little bit. Markets were fine with that. 0.1, okay, that's a rounding error. 0.4. Almost half a percent greater than the previous measure for the core CPI? That's horrible. That's horrible. That's that's incredibly far off from six percent. This was this right here was the worst case situation. You're not in the fives, guys. You're not in the fives. You're in the sixes and you're close to the mid sixes right? This was the worst case situation for the core CPI year over year. We didn't just skirt by with just like a 0.1 over, right? I said there was some flexibility. Markets would have tolerated a 0.1 difference. They can't tolerate, they can't tolerate a 0.4 increase, right? Almost half a percent increase in inflation on core CPI year over year. They can't tolerate this 0.3 difference right here, right? We're only talking about half a percent, right? That was the optimism. And yet we hit 0.3, right? We're on the wrong side of that average. We're on the wrong side of that average because that means this could easily be 8.5. That means inflation is not being fought, right? Core CPI month over month twice as bad twice as bad as the previous month right that's horrible that's this this is shocking this is shocking right here guys this this is just shocking okay this is what markets responded to twice as bad Expectation 0.3, what we got is 0.6. The previous measure was 0.3. We expected at least the same amount of inflation. We did not expect twice as much inflation. The markets are feeling inflation is not being fought. And so what's happened now is those two camps that I talked about, the inflation warriors and the recession warriors now banded together because the inflation warriors are saying inflation is not being fought. We're going to have to fight inflation harder. And the recession warriors are saying, wow, 
<laughs> inflation's not being fought. We have to fight inflation harder. And so the Fed is going to have to increase rates significantly, significantly. The Fed is going to have to go harder and deeper than Jerome Powell has ever gone on America before, right? That's what the recession warriors are now saying, and they believe that we are going to get effed by Jerome Powell, okay? Two camps, inflation guys and also the recession guys. And so the recession guys, they're no longer thinking the Fed should go easy. You see, that's why it's two different camps. You have the inflation guys who wanted who wanted really early on just to get huge interest rates, just kill inflation early on. And then you have the recession guys who say, uh, you know, the Fed needs to take it easy. Uh, this, uh, this is a transitory, uh, you know, inflation. You're going to put the economy into a recession. Don't go too hard. But you know what? This data is basically telling them the Fed is way behind the curve and that they have to go hard. And so who's changing their mind here? The recession guys. Because the recession guys, are they can no longer make the argument the Fed is going too hard. The recession, the recession guys, right? The inflation guys always knew that. The recession guys are now saying, you know what's wrong? Our evaluation of the price of, of a stocks on the stock market is wrong. That's what's wrong. We can no longer talk about inflation anymore. We now have to talk about price over earnings ratios. The worst case situation has appeared before us. And you may think, it's only 0.3%. How can that control the fate of the world? Well, my guy... Alpha fam, 0.3% is going to control the world, okay? Double inflation than what was expected. And then you just look at the uh, CPI itself, right? Not even the core CPI. You just look at the CPI itself, and inflation is going up, not down, and it's not break even. And so, you know what? The inflation camp and the recession camp, the guys defending their corners, they are now shaking their hands, saying the way that we do this is by the Fed increasing rates with draconian measures, and we reevaluate the price of stocks to the downside for the long term. For the extended recession. This is the logic that's coming out of this. And it's the worst case situation. It doesn't, it might not feel that dramatic right now, but there is a high probability that we are going to feel it down the line and this will control the world. Okay? This will control the world. You saw the dollar spiking. This is going to have a huge impact on the Eurozone, on U.S. partners, on anyone who trades in dollars, anything traded in dollar pairs in markets across the world. It's going to have a huge impact. This will affect the world. What The data that we got today will affect the world, and crypto doesn't seem to get it yet. right? These meme coin people. They don't, they don't seem to get it yet. The stock market gets it. The stock market gets it. And this could be the tip of the iceberg. If I sound like I'm being overdramatic, we're going to parse through this in the coming days. Okay, we're going to parse through this in the coming days. But let me present something for you. That's very important. Our current target rate for interest rates is 225 to 250 basis points. Yesterday, 
Yesterday, we were talking about potential targets of 275 to 300 basis points, a 50 basis points increase. There was 10% of people, these just, uh, these just brain dead moon boy idiots, 10% of the population who just thought that uh, Jerome Powell's only going to cre- increase by 50 basis points. 91% of the market priced in 300 to 325 as the target interest rate. 90% of the market, almost everyone, believed Jerome Powell was going to increase by 75 basis points in the next Fed meeting, September 21st. What happened? Look, in August, in September, uh, the beginning of September, couple days ago, 0%, 0%, 0% of people believed that the Fed will increase interest rates by 100 basis points. Today, that number is 33%. See where I'm getting at with this? This is the worst case situation. What did I say in my last video? Right? In my last video, I mentioned that the worst the, the worst thing the worst thing that could happen is if the Fed decides it has to increase by 100 basis points, then the market is going to get just slapped down. And what happened? Suddenly, suddenly the prospect of a hundred basis points increase, right? These are the, these are the intelligent people in the room. This 33%, they're doing the math. And suddenly we have a new category, which was 0%, 0%, 0% before. Now 33% of those financial advisors, those financial wizards, those mathematics guys, right? All of, you know, all of the intelligent people are suddenly saying, ho, 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 oh, the Fed did not control inflation. This is not under control. This is not a proper trend line, okay? If we plot this data, with the uh, last few months on a chart, the chart is broken. This is this is a broken trend. All right, and so stocks just to bleed red, and the smart guys in the room are saying, uh, "Does that mean that Jerome Powell has to increase a hundred basis points?" And then they start thinking, wow, why was every Federal Reserve chairman and vice chairman and board member coming out for the last two weeks screaming at us in very draconian terms that the Fed is going to have to be incredibly strong? Why were they coming after us day after day? Even the doves were coming after us day after day saying that the market was being over-exuberant. They put two and two together. They put the Fed's, you know, what the Fed was telling us, which is that they're going to be strong, and they put this updated data together. They put two and two together, and they found it equals four, as opposed to the two or the one that they had expected. And so they're now starting to expect a 100 basis point increase by the Fed. And if that's a realistic target rate for the Fed to increase 100 basis points, then that means 67% of the market still has to catch up. What does that suggest? More red on the charts. That means deeper red on the charts blood red 
There's blood in the water. Crypto doesn't get it yet. Stock market gets it. The math geniuses, the guys doing the math, they get it. The idiots, those 10% of idiots, they are gone. 0% now believe the Fed will do 50 basis points. 0%. The 10% idiots, they they came around today. They saw that CPI data and they said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right? They have their dunce caps on. They're sitting in the corner of the classroom being punished for throwing spit wads, for pulling girls' hairs, right? Everyone's laughing at them because they can't keep up with the rest of the class, right? These nerds over here, these are 33% of nerds, right? They're like laughing because they don't get the math problem, right? It's It's just a funny math problem to these dorks, right? But they get it. They get it. They're laughing because they know what the joke is, right? And even the uh, even the slow learners have caught up, and they understand something's wrong. But 67% of the market, right? Those 10% of idiots, they've joined the middle, the middle of the market, and 60 uh, 67% of the market, they don't get it yet. They don't get it that the Fed could possibly increase interest rates by 100 basis points. They're going to figure that out pretty soon. And it'll be interesting to see if we get any commentary from the Fed regarding this. Because if 67% of the market is pricing in 75 basis points, the previous worst case situation then maybe we could hold this area at best, you know, and get a little bit of a a pump at best if the Fed only increases 75 basis points. If the Fed increases 100 basis points, we are going down because 67% of the market doesn't get it yet. They haven't priced it in. That means there's much deeper red to go on the charts Maybe 15%, another 15% down. Not sure. What did I say was the worst case situation that could happen? I I had this uh, purple line on my uh, chart here. I said, what if the dollar pumps up here? That's going to be anything up to here. That's going to be pullbacks potentially bullish pullbacks you start breaking these numbers right you start looking gung-ho on the dollar and i said 114 is still possible you bounce off this you use this clearly as support we're gonna not only have pullbacks you break this level we're gonna have broken something right that's gonna be the worst case situation USDT, what did I say was going to happen? Most likely we were going to pump to the middle of this and then we're going to have bullish pullbacks, right? And then continue on our way down. Well, the worst case situation is if we actually break through the middle, hold on to the middle and continue to pump up bullishly. That would be the worst case situation. Right now, that's not happening. The the crypto market doesn't get it yet, but it could happen. This could happen. The VIX, what did I say? I am going to be feeling very uneasy if this thing just spikes up towards the middle of this wedge when it was headed towards the bottom. And what happened? We're spiking up towards the middle of the wedge. We've passed the middle of the wedge. We look like we look like we could keep pu- uh, pushing on. The question is no longer 50 basis points versus 75 basis points, guys, on the Fed meeting on September 21st. The question now is between 75 versus 100 basis points. It's an entirely new question. That question had not been asked 
in the last couple months. It had no one was asking for a hundred basis points. Today, people, thirty-three percent of the smart guys in the room, right? Thirty-three percent of the market, the smart guys in the room, they are actually demanding a hundred basis points. They see that as a given already. That changes everything. That's the worst case situation we could have had today, guys. That math is the worst case situation. Let's jump over to the S&P 500. Well, here's the master key, right? Here's that master key. Lovely master key. The bulls, the bulls had thought that they could pump up, that they could break this local downtrend, right? That they could break this local downtrend, and they did. Let me go to a smaller time frame, four hours, just so we can see some price action here. The bulls had thought that they could break out of this downtrend, just the local one, not the macro one. We've been in a macro downtrend for quite some time, but... But the bulls thought that they could break this local downtrend so that we don't just keep plummeting to hell. That they could break above it. And then, wherever they ended up bullishly, because the CPI, I told you, the CPI was going to pull us down no matter what. 0% inflation was a pipe dream. There was going to be some type of inflation. We didn't think it was going to be the worst in the... We didn't think it was going to be double. The trend prior to this was that inflation was going down. We didn't think it was going to be doubled, right? 0.6 instead of 0.3. We didn't think it was going to be closer to the high to the highest end that you could... That you could wish for as a bear, right? But the numbers are what the numbers are, right? And so we did get a stronger pullback. We didn't get just a baby pullback that bounces off of this green zone, right? This was the idealism, something like this. Boom, right? Right on that weekly 21, that was idealistic. This wasn't a target goal. This was idealism. And then what I mentioned is, well, you know, there is this CME gap down here. We should have filled it on our way up because to leave it open, what did I say last video? It's like leaving a wound open. You see this gap right here? There's a hole in the chart, okay? Leaving that, leaving that wound open, it's like it's bleeding and it's festering. And so most likely, right? If we do have just a little bit of a worse data than we thought, most likely we're going to break down and fill that gap, kind of trick people that we're breaking back down under this downturn, and then we could go, right? That's if it was between 50 basis points and 75 basis points. That's if we were just like 0.1 off on the data. That's if we just had rounding errors on the data, a little bit of a buffer room on the data, right? A little bit of a negative interpretation because 0% inflation wasn't going to happen, guys. We would have been going to the moon if it was negative inflation. Of course it's not negative inflation. Everyone knows inflation has been increasing. We can feel it in our bones every time we go to the store and buy food. We can feel it, right? And so there was a high likelihood that we were going to bounce down here, fill that CME gap, use it as support. And then perhaps we can talk about reclaiming this zone. And then maybe, and then maybe we can just say that, okay, Jerome Powell is going to increase 75 basis points. Yeah, that's going to keep us a little suppressed, but the market is going to eat it. And then we can talk about moving on our way. But what happened? Well, what happened instead? Well, I, I can just delete this one. All right? This one's done. What hap what's happening instead? 
Okay, we got a fake out to the upside. It's, it wasn't really a fake out. It was just based on wrong data, right? Just based on data. We didn't have the full data, okay? Nobody has all the data. You have to wait for the data to come in. We blazed up here, and then what happened? We broke down. I can get rid of this dotted line, this dashed uh, vertical line. That's the CPI day date. We broke down. Broke through the CME gap. And we're slamming into this floor. What is that floor? Right here. Right here. But this floor is only representative of 33% of people who believe 100 basis points is on the table. Now, the 67% of people may end up being right, and maybe the Fed only increases by 75 basis points. But why do all those smart guys suddenly think 100 basis points today? There's a good chance that we're going to break this and we're going to break this structure and that we could revisit our June lows. Okay? If the Fed decides to increase by 100 basis points, there's a good chance, and you see our June lows are on a diagonal as well, right? Higher low, right? We have this, we have this low, higher low, we have this higher low, and then right now we're being held up in a very flimsy way by that. See this? Right? We have this kind of trend right here. Very flimsy trend. Kind of looks like a head and shoulders to me, guys. Yikes. Right? So we basically have this imperfect head and shoulders. Right shoulder is higher than the left shoulder. This is not an ideal head and shoulders. But it doesn't look good right it's got that kind of cup and handle kind of look to it that's this is not a cup and handle very close to being one but not one and so we do have the we do have the possibility to bounce from this area and surprise the market if Jerome Powell does 75 basis points or less but if the 21st comes up and Jerome Powell increases by 100 basis points we are going down If we breach 3,800 on my S&P 500 mini futures, we are going down probably 20% to this trend line. You can see this trend line. Now, we're in a downtrend, so the top of this market is what really matters. The bottom can start to curve, right? We could have some type of, you know, curve bottom, assuming things start going into accumulation or something. So I also have this blue line here at 3,500, but we could drop all the way down to 3,200 on the S&P. And if inflation and if stock evaluations aren't fixed by Q1 2023, we could be talking about another attempt and another failure. Okay, we could be talking about disaster in this in these markets. What a difference a day makes, guys. What a difference a day makes in markets. This line right here is the only thing holding us up. Do you see this line, guys? This is the only thing holding us up. You can talk about all these horizontals that you want, but this market is so parabolic. This thing has so many jump points on it. The diagonals are just as important as the horizontals, okay? You got you got to understand that. And so what have we done? We have broken down to this line here. We've broken down to it here. We've broken down to it here. There is going to be gravity in these charts to pull us down if there's a global financial crisis because of the skyrocketing dollar just destroying our friends and allies' markets. If there's a global financial crisis because of China 
and their weird, twisted dictatorship, which is destroying their own country and banking system and all of that. They only need a big mess, guys. They don't need to... China doesn't need to collapse. A lot of people are saying China's going to collapse. China's not going to collapse. At least not likely. Okay? Not likely. They have a lot of tools of the state that they're willing to use to hold themselves together. And they are willing to starve people to death in order to get that done. Brainwash, re-educate, put people into prisons to re-educate them before they'll let their country collapse. Okay, they are, we are going to see some chaos before China collapses. So let's not talk about the collapse of China, but could we say that there could be a financial crisis in China? Yeah. And how about Russia? Yeah. How about Europe? Yeah. How about the United States? Uh, it's looking kind of iffy with inflation. Okay, looking like we're going to have a hard recession, potentially, in the United States. And if the U.S. catches a cold, the world catches a flu, and if the world is already sick, then we can talk about the potential for a global financial crisis, which could cause the reevaluation of stocks to the downside to global financial crisis levels, which could be at the bottom of this range. You don't want to believe it. It could be at the bottom of this range. I've said this many, many times at Alpha Commission. This is not me flipping day to day. This is me just using the data that we have to extrapolate the possibility, the possibilities of different outcomes. But right now we have this blue line under us. We have buffer room. If 67% of the market ends up being right, then we could turn around in this area and just keep going. Okay? Just pretend like that area below us doesn't even exist. We could we could pump up and then we could have a reevaluation of stock prices, right? We could break out of this downtrend, just skyrocket, and then in 2023, when the recession hits, you know, most intensely. Then the stock market geniuses could reevaluate, right, the P over E ratios. But if they do it right now, and Jerome Powell increases 100 basis points, I think we're talking about at least a 20% drop in the stock market. We've already dropped a significant portion, maybe another 15%. That's my estimation, okay? That's That's... How important, that's how important this worst case outcome for the CPI is. And you and you guys looking at it, you just see like, you know, 0.3 difference, right? 0.3% difference. But what I see is 20% on the stock market. And if 20% on the stock market, that can be what ends up cutting Bitcoin and crypto down another 20 to 60%, depending on which coin you're talking about. Okay? This line in the sand is important. We have to watch this line in the sand. As I said, these were the master keys that I gave you. The top scenario, right? This top scenario does not seem like it's going to work out. Now we're talking about protecting ourselves on this on the potential for this down scenario, okay? And as we speak, Bitcoin is bleeding. <sighs> Guys, there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference between being under this diagonal, right? You guys know, I've underscored this so many times. You guys know there's a difference between between being over this diagonal and under this diagonal. Under this diagonal, we are putting in this same pattern. We are putting in this Wyckoffian redistribution type pattern, okay? It's not pretty, but it's there. And that could suggest the bear flag 
to the downside is going to play out. Now, above that diagonal, right? Above that diagonal, we are talking about, let me go to a much smaller time frame. Let's go to, yeah, here, the four hour chart, right? Let me get rid of this falling wedge. It's just distracting. It pretty much played out its move, okay? So this was the measured move. It delayed it. The market makers had their fun. They pushed this point right here down to right here. And look, we, we actually exceeded the measured move. But, um, whoops, sorry. The yellow dashed line is what we're looking at. All right, it should have been the breakout point right here. Everyone got fooled because we had a, a retest down here, right, in this area. And so the measured move off of that, we exceeded it, okay? But the thing is, we got held underneath this. You see this? Resistance, 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 right? Sorry, support, support, support. Resistance, resistance, and using it as resistance again. What about this area right here, right? This is what I mentioned last episode. Resistance, 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 resistance. So we've got double resistance in this area. And then what else did I mention? In the context of our macro downtrend, Huge resistance, macro resistance, macro resistance, macro resistance. There was no question, Alpha Fam. There was no question we were going to get rejected here. The question, the question that existed was whether or not we were just going to fill the CME gap on this diagonal. Right? This is the best case situation. There's no situation where we're just going to break through that. That's stupid. Nobody, whoever thought that, I don't know. Just, you know, just forget about those people. That's those 10% of people, you know, who thought, who thought that the Fed's going to increase just by 50 basis points. Okay. Like those are the, those are the numbskulls. Okay. Look, we had triple resistance. If you consider our macro downtrend, this is a macro resistant area. And then we had double resistance just in our local chart. So best case situation Price action broke off this wedge, right? Did its measured move, faced resistance, came down, made some type of bull flag, right? Was able to breach it maybe a couple times, and then boom, got the original measured move, actually made what, you know, the, the, the real measured move that I was looking for was a head and shoulders, right? Like an inverted head and shoulders right here then pumped up to this area because this this would be an inverted head and shoulders at that point we're no longer talking about this falling wedge right just i just left that line there just you know to suggest that's the that's what we could have expected on that breakout but really what we, what we should have been planning on was a head and shoulders right that potentially could take us to 25000 right that was the best and the medium case situation because the medium case situation allowed for this head and shoulders right so here's the shoulder here's the head right here's the shoulder to come as far down as like basically you know basically like down here just kind of like same height shoulders and then we go okay so you don't just get the CME gap but you also maybe test the top of this MACD. Well, we we filled the CME gap. We busted our MACD. We're at we're at support for this macro region here, right? We got a little bit of a layer be below us, but we're pretty much at support. But crypto doesn't seem to be pricing in what's going on. They don't seem to have gotten the message the way that the stock market has. And so is this going to hold or not? We are right here just barely hanging on to our daily stokes. But 20,700, 20,800 was the level that we needed to hold in order to have our weekly momentum, our weekly stokes, 
And so we've lost that. I mean, we have four days. We could recover it, right? In three or four days, we could recover it. But it's not a good look. And so this is the worst case situation. I mean, it could be worse. We could break our daily stoke. We're still holding on to that. That's the hopium, okay, guys? So we have some hopium still remaining that this is so far a higher low. But it's really it's really questionable how do we how do we move from here? Because look at this price action, right? Basically the same thing. Basically the same rejection. Alright, what do we do? Pump up again? If if we do this I mean, that's just going to be history repeating itself. Okay. So we're revisiting our lows. This was what we didn't want to happen, right? Let's see. What's the little cheat sheet that I had for myself? We had to hold above 20,700 at the close of the day. We've already closed to retain bullishness. We have to hold above 20,300, and it's going to take lots of work. Well, we've lost that. And then the bottom line, the critical support, is 19,530. That number may have moved slightly. That's approximately the same. 19,530. If we lose that, you know, any hope is kind of gone. And we're probably going to start breaking down even further, most likely. Okay, these are all probabilities. Nothing is 100% certain. This is not financial advice. It's just a thought problem for entertainment, for education, just to improve myself as a trader. And if any of you can benefit by following along with me, more power to you. There's a link to the Alpha Commission Discord in the description of this video. Uh, please feel free to join us for conversation. It gets lonely in a bear market, so go for it, you know? If you're going to follow this stuff day to day, you might as well talk with the people. You know, you might as well talk with people about it. We're going to be we're going to be the ones to catch that absolute bottom. Maybe we already have, right? If you bought this if you bought this bull flag, all right, if you bought this bull flag right here, you're still in profit. Congrats, okay? My best friend in crypto, Crypto Retta, he and I were just debating like crazy over whether or not we should advise people to get in at this point because of the risk. You see that risk. You see that risk on this chart because of the risk involved in this market. It's very hard to decide to do those things, to, to talk to your friends and your family, right, and advise them on something. You know, at least tell them what you're going to do. And so if you got in on that, on that bull flag, on the perfect retest of this falling wedge, the perfect retest of that falling wedge on a bull flag, yeah, congrats. Like, that was an interesting area to get in. But you know why that thing was such a risk? You know why it was such a risk? Let's go to our daily, right? Put on our EMAs. And right there, pardon me, you were under your 9 and and you, pretend, uh, yeah, you were under your uh, 4 EMA. These things were sloped downwards. They were not sloped upwards. That candle is what made all this stuff uh, slope upward, right? So our EMAs were pointed down. That's all we knew. That's all we knew. How can you advise people, all right? How can you advise people that you love, you know, when the chart looks like this and it could just keep falling over, right? It could just keep falling over. So we had a debate about this, a healthy debate, like a friend, uh, a debate in friendship, right? Like uh, we talked about these things and we just decided, you know, it's not the best time to come out strong in favor of a position here. There could be a pump, but because this was a nice retest off of this wedge, but there's a lot of risk in the market, and we wanted to see at least some strength above this diagonal. At least that's what I wanted to see. 
right? Recover this 9 on the daily, recover this 21 on the daily. Man, that's a daily squeeze play, right? And what do we get? Right? We got that daily squeeze play. But it came in like one candle, which suggested that it was weak. It was artificial. And so we also broke it down in that candle. And what was I telling you? We had institutional candles, right? We had institutional candles all over the place. Institutional candle here, institutional candle here. Now we've got another institutional candle, right? These candles tend to get reclaimed. So yeah, we could have some pump, right, to reclaim this candle. But even if we, if even if we reclaim the majority of this candle, there's a high probability we're going to be underneath this diagonal, and that we could just continue to break down, right? I mean, we could continue to break down right now. Our structure is being violated, right? We we do have a higher low, but we have a lower high here, right? So this is this is ugly. It's ugly. We're under critical support, in my opinion. Okay, at least for breaking out of a macro downtrend. The hopium still exists. If Jerome Powell does not increase by 100 basis points, but that threshold, right, the threshold is very hard to talk about these days because the math geniuses in the stock market, 33% of the market are now saying Jerome Powell probably needs to increase by 100 basis points. And the inflation guys and the recession guys are both kind of asking him to do that, to get to take control of this situation. And the recession guys, they're just kind of saying like, uh, we'll just adjust the price over earnings ratios. That'll take care of it. We'll buy back later. When all these uh, when all these scrubs are wiped out, we'll buy back later. When the market's 20% down. 20% more down. <laughs> all right? Let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum also had its falling wedge, had a measured move, has a higher low, lower high, but higher low. Again, what I mentioned, it's kind of looking like the it, it had the opposite look of Bitcoin. It had that kind of uh, head and shoulders look that could potentially go to the downside, right? What's at the downside? Ethereum has a CME gap down here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ethereum at like 1300, okay? And then maybe it goes, right? Maybe this market just needs to get real reevaluated. Or maybe it drops a, a a layer lower, right? But what can we just say based upon the facts on the chart? The facts on the chart not just like these patterns and CME gaps and all that stuff, right? The facts on the chart are that Ethereum is way below its daily momentum level. It's broken out of its weekly, you know, potential squeeze area. So it's under where it needs to be, okay? It's under where it needs to be. Let's go through some of these uh, coins really quick. Just in the last couple minutes here. Kadena got reset. It's still in that green box area, but it got reset, and it's playing with a with it's playing with this support line. Okay. I haven't updated the momentum zone for uh, Kadena, but. Let's throw on our daily EMAs. You can see we're underneath the daily nine. Not a great look. We're underneath the diagonal. Not a great look, okay? Just be careful, guys. Be careful. We could have another leg down in the market. Just to be careful. Flux. Squeezing to the downside. We already knew that. Flux, Flux had an incredible play. This was the squeeze play to the upside. Just, just brilliant, just brilliant flux. I mean, flux guys, you guys did everything you needed to do. You got just this massive two hundred percent run. Great job, flux. You like you did what everybody wanted to do, but very few coins could do. 
you got that 200% run, and now it's just kind of turning around, okay? Like, that's that's normal. That's totally normal. This thing ran a marathon, and it's just taking a rest, okay? Like, give 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 Flux a chance to breathe, okay? It just needs to rest its legs. Ada lost its momentum zone underneath the 9 on the daily. Not a great look, but still a higher low. Zilliqa, same thing as Kadena, basically, okay? But playing around with this type of drop area here could could be dangerous. Below the daily nine, just like all these things are, right? Everything got knocked under their daily nine. That's not a good place to be. Underneath the daily nine, okay? You see this red EMA? Underneath the daily nine, you close under there, so what my friend Crypto Reda taught me, right? You're pumping, you're pumping, you come back to retest the nine, but you close the day underneath the nine. There's a good chance you get stuck there and you can just fall to hell, okay? Pumping, pumping above the nine, pumping, 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 close the day, right? Underneath the nine, there's a good chance you continue to fall, right? And to continue to go down. Zilliqa pumping, pumping above the 9. Close the day under the 9. There's a good chance you continue to fall. Why would you want to buy there? I mean, just if you're trying to not have a heart attack in this industry, you know, of course you can buy, you know, all of these kind of like uh, supply zones, you know, demand zones, all of these things. You can play with those zones, right? But you're, you're losing some critical support. You're losing your critical momentum. You're not in any type of macro squeeze, and you're underneath your daily nine. You really need to be in that coin. You can't wait for it to just get to just show a little bit of bullishness. You have to be the first one in. I mean, that's up to you and your risk assessment profile. But I'm just saying, I, why would I need to be in right now? As long as Bitcoin was showing support, as long as stocks were so uh, showing strength, as long as the CPI data wasn't too bad. As long as the expectation by the math geniuses were, you know, 75 basis points by the Fed, I thought, okay, everything's a wash. We've got a baseline. We can go for it. But if the math geniuses are now saying 100 basis points, and if I do the calculations and there's a 20% downside on stocks, which is huge, then that's a lot of risk for crypto. Okay, that's a lot of risk for crypto. I may just want to see some bullishness in the market. I may just want to see what the Fed does before I make my decisions. I showed you the NQ1. Same thing as like the, uh, this is the NAS100. This is the mini futures, right? And again, I can show you, let me take off these EMAs. I don't care if people think I have too many lines. I use every one of them, so, you know, what can I do? I'm sorry. I use every single one of those lines. These are my tools, so I respect them. Right now, we do have this diagonal support, right? This diagonal trend to the upside. We're hanging on to it. We're hanging on to it by a thread. But again, if the math geniuses are correct, we're going to break that area. At least by the time Jerome Powell speaks, if not before then, right? I mean, something really good has to, something really good, some really good news has to happen in the market to hold on to this trend line. Because we didn't bounce down there. This is where we, we bounced from, right? Right here. So we're on this trend right here. And this is a very, very flimsy trend. Okay, all things considered, right? Like this is the strong one. This one's just a, uh, this is just a, a weak one, right? And what could we see, right? Where were we up here? We could see similarly a 20% decrease if we come down to this type of a downtrend line. Right, this one right here.
And then we can catch ourselves on one of these shelves, right? See these kind of diagonal shelves? That's just what I call it. We caught one we caught, we caught one right there. We could catch this one potentially. So maybe 18% down, right? Maybe this one right here, 23% down. But if we break down, I mean, we have our previous one. This is basically going to be a double bottom. You know, we could hit this blue line right here. And double bottom. That's a possibility. Or 20% down, okay? Like a... So we have a couple levels that could give us some bounce, just kind of psychological levels that could give us some bounce. Otherwise, we just have this downtrend, okay? And there's, there's no way around that. Which, again, that could be 20 to 20 to 60 percent down on crypto, okay? Depending on which crypto you're looking at. Let's go over to the more updated one. You can see this a little bit clearer, how we're just sitting on this one. Sitting on that one. We could easily break down. We could easily bounce and then just break down. Okay, just wedge yourself in this corner and then just fall like crazy. So how we wedge ourselves in this corner right here, this is going to be critical in stocks. Okay, I'm looking at the NAS 100, NAS 100. That's the symbol. Do this. All right, maybe we're going to live another day. But do this, even wick down there. I mean, you better get out if this thing starts bouncing back up because, you know, it's probably going to double bottom or something really quick and then like this, right? That, that wouldn't be weird. That's how this thing behaves, right? We did it right here, right? This big movement, this big movement, an attempt that failed and then break down to this line. This big movement, an attempt that fails, and then breaking down to this line. Right? Look at that. Look at that. Just like the S&P, but the NASDAQ is a little bit more bullish on its uh, bottom line here, on its macro line. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we're talking about the same scary type of fall, okay? And then maybe that's the real bottom of the market, and we just get that by the end of the year. The one positive in our favor is that Jerome Powell is pricing in, I mean, that the uh, stock market is starting to price in 100 basis points. And if Jerome Powell only does 75 basis points, we still have the possibility for this outcome. Okay? Don't give up hope. Don't be a perma bear. Just don't be a perma bull, right? That's why we have to have conditions and confirmations. And some of our com conditions were met for the potential for bullishness. But now some of our conditions have been met for potential bearishness. And we don't have a confirmation of either yet. But we do have a confirmation of a breakdown as opposed to a confirmation of greater support, right? That diagonal on Bitcoin. So we have more, we have more confirmation for a breakdown. We've lost some critical levels compared to what we needed to hold on to. So guys, we're just going to watch how this plays out. I think I gave you the relevant uh, information. You can do with it what you will. The hope is still there. It's just, you know, we're out of that area that could have been a jackhammer against that downtrend. Now we're just being slapped down by the downtrend, okay? Harshly. And similarly as we were in the past, which led to catastrophic drops, and the stock market doesn't look any better. <coughs> Pardon me. And the and the uh, and the market is starting to expect that the Fed is going to have to have more interest rate increases than anyone even expected, even you know a day ago. There was zero percent expectation for a hundred percent for a hundred basis points 
increases a day ago. Now 33% of the market expects that. Totally different calculation. We're starting over. Starting over with our calculations. We're under this diagonal now. Not a good look. All right, guys, that was your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.